If there is one thing in gaming that'll bring people together, it's microtransactions. Specifically, the criticism and just overall hatred of them. Overwatch, Valorant, GTA, FIFA, or EAFC. It don't really matter what genre you play, if it has online games in it, somebody's running up a bag off microtransactions, guaranteed. And out of all the systems games might have, the one I think that has the best one is the finals. Now imagine for a second that one, you're not broke. And two, you want to buy a skin. Highest tier skin there is in whatever game. What price comes to mind? Could be 15, could be 20, maybe even up to 50. But as long as people are paying, companies gonna keep running the prices up and people are for surely paying. Despite that, I can go in the finals, get this set right here. 31 different things in here. $18. And the way cosmetics works in the finals, everything's mixed and matched. So like shirt, bottoms, shoes, crossbody, lower body, stuff like that. It's all interchangeable. So it really costs 20 because $20 is coming out of your wallet. That's the important part. Because in this case, 2,400 coins in the finals is $20. This set costs 2,200. There are sets that cost 1,800, 1,650, 1,600. Some of the smaller ones cost 1,200. And then individual stuff can go up to 800. And that includes weapon skins. You can get an individual weapon skin that's like the most, I guess, different from the normal model. That's gonna be about 800 coins, which is about $8. For comparison, in Apex, a gold skin is gonna be 18, that's character or weapon. So when you can get a skin you like for $8, you're spending less per skin than pretty much any other popular online game out right now. So that's already a good thing. How good or bad you think the skins really are, that's a you thing. Hitting the like button is also a you thing and it's free. But the real reason that the finals has the best microtransaction system is because of how the inventory and the store works. The finals has a store like any other game, right? It rotates stuff, has the newest stuff at the top, all the stuff at the bottom. But when things go out of the store, it doesn't just disappear. You just go to the inventory of your characters, whether it be like a light clothing item, like the LH1 for the light or just any clothing item for any of the characters, it doesn't really matter. And you could buy something that dropped in season one because literally everything that's ever dropped in the game is still available to buy if you want. Except for the starter bundles, you can't cop those, but that's okay because you got everything else. And depending on the game, you could be waiting a while because games get a lot of skins over time. I mean, finals too, they be dropping skins a lot. And on top of that, with the stats I mentioned, even that 31 piece set, you can buy things individually if you wanted. If you buy it as a full bundle, it'll be discounted from all the individual prices stacking together. But if you just want to buy one thing, you can buy that one thing. It wasn't always like that. I think season two, they made it like that. I say all that to say is that they removed the fear of missing out from their microtransactions entirely. And that to me is the best way to do it instead of here's this specific skin that's only going to be available for three days. And if you don't cop it right now, you may not ever see it again in your life. Way of doing it. A side effect of this is people will likely wait to buy a skin that they like. And then they'll keep waiting and then they don't end up buying it and they might be waiting just because they know what's always going to be there or the skin just grows off them i do this all the time when i'm looking at clothes on depop when i'm scrolling on there and i see something i like i don't have a real reason to believe that someone else is going to buy the thing so i pretty much never impulse buy on there but if we look at my likes list on here it's just a graveyard of y'all just copping the stuff that i was going to buy in 2026 this is disgusting actually like this is mostly grayed out. I was looking at these like an hour ago. This is ridiculous. But also it might be something that I liked at first glance and looked at the pictures and then like a week or two later, I'm just kind of like, eh, and I take it off. Are there other games that have done this? Probably. Truthfully, I ain't looked too hard, but from what I've played, I haven't really seen it like that. Most of the time it's just limited time to get a skin or cosmetic, whatever it is. And in a perfect world, this would be the norm for in-game stores, but that ain't happening. Like I'm not getting my hopes up. But to be fair, I think the night market in Valorant is a good idea. This I'd imagine CS has the same thing. That's probably where they got it from. But yeah, just having five skins that are just specific to you in terms of just like a randomizer, so everyone gets a different random set of skins that are discounted from the normal price. So there is a way to get an individual skin discounted without buying an entire bundle. I think that's a cool idea. It still has the time limit attached, but still it's discounted, at least there's that. And then if they were to put that into the finals, like even if the night market were the end in the finals, then you could just go into the inventory and get it because it wasn't that expensive to begin with. So all that being said, FOMO was something that the finals just didn't want to mess with. They just did away with that, but something they brought back into the game is the atmosphere of the game. They kind of lost it for a few seasons, but now in season four, they got it back again. And I made a video about that. It's on the screen right now. You can go watch that. Subscribe to the channel. God bless. Bye. In the way, pff, I keep wanting to say microtransactions, cosmetic. Ah!
Still here. 